Hello everyone, my name is Raijin. The Ruby Volume 9 finale is almost upon us, and Ruby Rose is about to change forever. That is undeniable. But there are some good ways to do that, and some very bad ways. Today I'm going to lay out why some of those narratives are better than others. So consider this a theory video for how Ruby Volume 9 will end. The main reason some endings are better than others is because the story overall needs to be cohesive. It can't tell one story all the way up to the finale and then suddenly finish it differently. It needs to pay off what it has built up. Earlier on in Volume 9, the crew for the show held a Discord watch party for Ruby Volume 9 Chapter 1, where they said this. I think that one theme that we explore a lot in this volume that I think was really important to a lot of us was is, is imposter syndrome. I think that's probably already becoming very clear and will become more clear. That is an important note. Ruby Volume 9 is a story about imposter syndrome. Ruby has been trying to live up to the stories of the heroes. Ruby has been trying to live up to Summer. And Ruby is now presented with the ability to become someone new and she reaches for Summer Rose's weapon. In Chapter 5, leaving the blacksmith with a weapon means becoming that person. But Ruby is not leaving with Summer's axe. Ruby is not becoming Summer, because that would undermine the entire narrative of Volume 9 up until this point. Imposter Syndrome is about not feeling worthy of the role that you are in, that there's really an imposter in the role. The way to resolve an imposter syndrome narrative is not to become qualified or become worthy, but to show that the role doesn't need those high qualifications in the first place. In other words, it would be better for Ruby to simply talk to Summer rather than to become her. Right now, Ruby probably does want that. She may want to be her mother because that's the easy way out of her burden. But talking to Summer would allow for Summer to say everything that Ruby needs to hear. Ruby needs Summer to say that Ruby becoming her is pointless, because Ruby is already enough as she is. Ruby has this heroic image of Summer in her head. But really, Summer comes with her own share of faults that Ruby was blind to. Maybe Summer had imposter syndrome as well. Nobody is perfect. And I should clarify, if and when Ruby does change, we know that it's possible for her to not lose her memories, because the blacksmith said so. They say the only thing that can happen here is what you want to happen. So if Ruby wants to keep her memories, she will. And at the moment, it sounds like she does. I've seen some people pushing for Ruby to become Summer as a sort of middle stage to realizing and understanding that she can just, or that she just needs to be herself. And that would work thematically, but it's ultimately not what Ruby needs, because Ruby's already been trying to be Summer. Ruby kind of already knows that it's impossible, and as much as it would be an easy way out, and as much as she would be gravitated towards it, what Ruby needs more than that, and what can accomplish the same goal, is simply talking to Summer. On another note, while I am having this discussion, I should point out something that I've seen in the discourse and the commentary of Ruby changing and becoming something that she's not through death. I've seen Ruby Volume 9 get compared to Genlock Season 2. Kemi McLeod's narrative involves committing unalive so that she can gain new powers and also, in a way, live forever. Obviously, that does not handle certain themes correctly. And there are a few reasons why Ruby Volume 9 does not compare to that. As I've already stated, becoming someone that you are not is antithetical to the proper resolution for an imposter syndrome arc. And I have full confidence in where Ruby Rose is headed in the finale of Ruby Volume 9. Ruby, as herself, will realize that she is enough. 
Another somewhat popular theory is that Team Ruby would leave the Ever After with the tool needed to defeat Salem. That That is one of the ways that Ruby Volume 9 will connect back to the plot on Remnant. This would be some sort of allusion to the Vorpal Sword. But at this point, the only narrative arc that could lead there is through Ruby's ascension into someone else. That that someone else is, in a way, the Vorpal Sword. But again, that would require Ruby to be someone that she is not, which would be horrible for the narrative. The better message would be for that Vorpal Sword to have been within Ruby all along. Her silver eyes can already counter Salem. That's why Salem has been hunting silver-eyed warriors to near extinction. Perhaps Salem knows that, with enough training, silver eyes could end her plan for good since they come from the God of Light. I am fairly certain that Chapter 9 ended where it did because the next scene on Ruby's journey is her one-on-one -on -one conversation with Summer, and the crew wanted to leave that for the finale. So, Volume 9, Chapter 10, The Finale, will start with Ruby's conversation with her mother, where Summer gets through to her that Ruby, as herself, is enough. She says that there is no real, sizable difference between what Summer could do and what Ruby can do. Summer had her own faults, and perhaps her own imposter syndrome too, and Ruby then returns to her team as herself without receiving any new purpose and without losing her memories, and the plot can move forward from there. Even though I don't want Ruby to ascend, I do still love the idea that Ruby Rose would get a new outfit to show her growth. All of hers so far have related back to Summer Rose, in some way. Even Ruby's emblem is the same as her mother's, except it is stylized as red instead of white. So instead of Ruby getting an outfit that is more like Summer, Ruby would come into her own. Perhaps she adds a color or two that Summer doesn't have, like yellow or green, to show how Yang or Penny or Oscar have helped her become stronger over time. But Summer has still had a really big impact on Ruby, so removing Summer entirely isn't the best idea, though there should still be a departure from Summer Rose's style in Ruby. To close this out, I have every confidence that Ruby Rose will not lose her memories, will not ascend to be a markedly different person, there will not be any death of the character. She will, however, become the ultimate version of herself rather than losing herself to become someone else. But how do you think Volume 9 will end? Let me know down below. And while you're around, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. I'm Raijin Rising. Have a good one.